is not ashamed to call us brethren. Now today I want us to look at a few things. Even on our manual, on our church manual, we have evidence or signs of spiritual immaturity. And I want us to examine a few of those things today as we tie it up to what we shared on Sunday. I'd like for us to read 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll read from verse 1 and then see what really happened in the church in Corinth. The church in Corinth, they were babies. They were just the nepios, the ones who refused to grow. The one who felt there's no need to just bother ourselves. They loved their state. There was quarreling, infighting, fornication, and all sorts of that. And Paul came rebuking them. The first statement Paul made is, What? Know you not that your body is the temple. And he kept exalting them, making them realize that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. They have nothing to do with unrighteousness. That they are the temple of the living God. He said, What well, called as Christ will be here. And to remind them that they were Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. There any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Now, these are questions, probing questions. Questions that we should not just gloss over. Questions of great interest. But the question here is, Paul needed to address a few things. That they should come to the understanding of who they are now. Who they are now in Christ. That the least matter, the root of God, is a sign of spiritual immaturity. A little matter, they go to the law court. They want to prove a point. And the Bible says, this least issue, don't you also realize, don't, do, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Now, when we don't allow our true nature to manifest, we just yield to the flesh. We yield to the flesh. We allow the flesh to dominate us. We want to prove a point. We want to stand for our right. And sometimes, when we get to that level, we are veered off. And we have allowed the flesh to take over us. The truth of the matter is, Paul poses a question. And what was the question? Don't you know? That you shall judge the world And if the world shall be judged by you Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter That matter That can be taken to court Can be settled The Bible refers to it as what S Small matter Pastor if you know what they did to me The Bible calls it a small matter Pastor he was the one that did this cross The Bible says Small matter Let's get back to that Hebrews. We'll come back here. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. Where we talked about the father. We come from the same womb. We hail from the same source. We ought not to fight each other. We have to respect the fact that we, the same blood of Jesus has paid for us. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. Did you hear what the Bible says? The NLT render says, so now Jesus, the one that makes holy, have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. It's just like Jesus swimming past the shine to court. Who will judge the case? <coughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Now this is where believers have missed it. We, we just, because we refuse to grow. All of these things are signs of spiritual immaturity. And the way you just know a child is that for everything a child wants to get, he cries. A child cries if he's hungry. A child cries if he wants to get water. A child cries for everything he wants to get. If he wants attention, he cries. And so we can just see the Nepios, the people who refuse to mature in church. Every little thing they yell, they cry, they do everything. And Paul had to ask them, in Corinth, Always quarreling. Always fighting. And why? 
They have just failed to realize who they are. They have failed to realize where they come from. They have failed to realize they have the same father. They fail to realize that they are from the same womb. Some of these things we just say is the devil. No. The Bible says we are not in the flesh. Everybody said we are not in the flesh. So when Paul got to the church in Corinth, he said, I could not speak to you as spiritual. I just, I, I just saw you as carnal. Because no carnal, there's nothing like carnal Christian. He said that they are in the flesh or in the, or in the, in the spirit. Carnal just refers to maybe one who is not saved. Praise the name of the Lord. And then look at what the Bible says. He said, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. And we said the word brethren came from the Greek word called adelphos, which means from the same womb. If Jesus has no, has, has no shame of calling us brethren, and we should also know that brother you are taking to court is from the same womb with you. A sign of spiritual immaturity. When we don't realize who we are, we behave anyhow. Say that to your neighbor. When you don't realize who you are, you just behave anyhow. But when you gain knowledge, you are expected to live as uh, better. Let's get, get me back to that scripture again. Praise the name of the Lord. Is anybody getting something this evening? That's the reason of coming to church. Now look at verse 3. You know, not that we shall judge angels, how much more things that pertains to this life. Know you know that we shall judge angels, how much more things that pertains to this life. Ordinary things. Things that, as a matter of fact, some of us will die and leave here. Things that will not go with you to, 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 to meet with Jesus. Things that will eventually keep behind you. And the Bible says, the things pertaining to this life. All of these things are signs of spiritual immaturity. We refuse to just march on. I never forget the scripture I read, and I will just jump there, come back to to what we want to do today Ephesians chapter 4 I, I never forget this scripture from verse number 29 Ephesians 4 from 29 we'll get back he said let no corrupt corrupt, corrupt com uh, communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of a defined the building up that it may minister grace unto who the next verse grieve not the Holy Spirit of God where we, whereby you were sealed under the day of redemption. I will not talk about that. Let how many things? How many things? And what? And what? And what? And what? Be put away from with all. Now it means that this is not part of you. So when believers suddenly step into this zone, you can just see they have walked into the flesh. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Help me say, this is not part of my nature. And that's why I say, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What should proceed is the one unto edification. That is what you have been built for. Help me say, I'm built for edification. You know, in Hebrews, it says, as it is called today, let us what? Exhort one another. Let's uplift one another. Let's not talk people down. Let's not behave, behave immaturely. Let's, let's, let the brethren understand our flow of love. Let, do not allow current communication. But what you should allow, because that is your nature, what builds people up. Praise the name of the Lord. Is that, that you let go of all malice, anger, wrath, evil speaking, clamoring. You know what clamoring is? You repeat one word over and over again. I think I told you before, this is what it did. Even the man has told you, I'm sorry. You still come back. You come over it. You want 10 persons to hear about it. He said, this is not part of you. Let me say to someone, it's not part of my nature. I have the nature of Christ. Come on, let me hear a better amen. I have the nature of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So, but when you see it, believers as they beat this, you just see people who walk in the flesh. They want their flesh to dominate them. They want their flesh to ride over them. They want their flesh to be, you know, their master. But Romans 8 verse 9 say, you are not in the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not in the flesh. Now, 
pastor, why are you bringing it side by side? I just want you to realize that some of the things we want to live for are the things that, you know, just happening and around us are the things we just allow because we refuse to know who we are. But when we realize who we are, we live above these things. The Bible says when it comes to the issue of malice, we should be children. But when it comes to other things, we should be adult. We should be mature. Praise the name of the Lord. We should be children because that's their life. It's a little commun current communication. Stop clamoring, anger, evil speaking, bitterness. No, it's not part of you. Because bitter water and sweet water cannot come out from the same source. You cannot give a sweet water and at the same time bitter water. That is not who you are. The believer is not the one who gives bitterness. The one who gives sweet water is the believer. Praise the name of the Lord. Help me tap your neighbor. He said, that is who I am. Now take me back to verse 30 or verse 31. Verse 31. I want to link it up. The next verse. Next verse. Quickly. Verse 32. And be ye kind, tender, forgiving, even us. For Christ's sake, have forgiven you. So I am for, I, I, I'm forgiving people not because I want them to forgive me. I'm forgiving because of the way I have been forgiven. I'm forgiving you because Christ has forgiven me. So the way I receive forgiveness is the way I should dispense forgiveness. So how did I receive forgiveness? I didn't merit it. I didn't work for it. I didn't ask for it. Forgiveness was dispensed to me in the same way. I don't need you to come up apologize. I don't need that is not to say to apologize is wrong. Did you hear what I just said? But I, you should be a step ahead of the one who has wronged you. That step ahead of the one who has wronged you is that I have forgiven you even before you came. Am I speaking to some, somebody here? Because that's your true nature. They say, because Christ did not wait for us to apologize. The Bible says in Romans 8, Romans 5 from verse 8, how that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, what happened to us? He took the initiative. He did not only take the initiative, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. And we should now forgive as he has forgiven. That is who we are. Forgiveness is part of our nature. Because as Christ is, that's who we are. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. So in the same vein, everything he possesses, we possess. He said, he that sanctified, and those who are sanctified, they are what? Come on, talk to him. They are? Now because we are one, that is why we just act like him. We are not trying to copy him. We have all of his deposit inside of us. We are not trying to learn principles because Christianity has nothing to do with principles. I've seen people trying to learn principles. It's not a principle. It's not a set of rules. It's a life. Christianity is a life. We should stop these principle things. Principle one, principle two. No, it's a life. The life of God in you. Coming out for the world to see. Look at what Pastor Shine quoted today in Philippians chapter 2. When he said, what are your salvation? And the next thing he said, for it is God that walketh in you. So he didn't say, walk for your salvation. He said, let it just walk out. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. Let's quickly get something. You, you are just making me to delve into things I shouldn't talk about today. Look at what the Bible says. Can we read together? As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. How did you receive him? You receive him by believing on the work he has done. That is how you to walk. Just walk with him. Just based on this word. What did the word of God say? I just walk in him like that. He said, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus. Walk ye in him. When the word of grace or the gospel was preached to you. You believe that word. And how do I walk this Christian life? This Christian world? I just walk the word. The word is inside already. Christ is inside already. For in him we move, in him we live, in him we have our being. Don't you know you will judge angels? Don't you know you will judge the world? If you, can, if you will judge the, the world and judge angels, the least matter in church, the least matter with your brother, the least matter with your sister, from the same womb, you should be matured enough to know how to handle it. A sign of immaturity to run to the courts. A sign of immaturity to all people must hear us. It just shows your level. It just shows who you are. It just shows that you are just still walking in the flesh. Glory be to God forever. Help me squeeze your neighbor's hand and say you are not like that. 
Say like you mean it. Say you are not like that. Tap your neighbor. Say you have the nature of God in you. Christ lives in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. You are a true reflection of him. Who is the first to say amen here? So as you have received Christ, walk in him. Rooted. Grounded. Rooted and built up in him. Establishing the faith. As ye have been taught. Abounding the heavens. With what? Very simple. The way you receive Christ, walk in him. You didn't receive Christ with principle. Don't walk with Christ based on principle. Write that down. Because we live in a world where today motivational speakers everywhere. Principle. Ten steps. You didn't receive Christ by steps. You received Christ because the word, the gospel was preached to you. You believed that word and upon your belief, you were saved. You received the word and you were saved. The Bible says be rooted. And you know we've been doing a lot of teaching in church. Especially for those people who have not been coming for workers meeting on Sunday morning. I encourage you. Come early. We'll be teaching you. And we establish a few points in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 to 4. It has been our main, main emphasis. And we will throw through it today. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. And look at what Paul had to say to the church in Corinth. Because the church in Corinth, they were baby Christians. They were walking in the flesh. They walked in the flesh. So much so Paul had to rebuke them. What know you not that your body is? You are still that child of God. But don't allow the flesh to dominate you. Allow the life of Christ in you. you walk it. Just walk it out. Let the world see that life in you. For it is Christ that walketh in me. For it is God that walketh in me. Both to what? And to do. It's good. Plan. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. Which also you have received. And we are in what? Tap your neighbor and say the gospel you receive has a propensity of making you to stand. And he said, as you have received him, walk in him. Just walk in him. He said, the gospel which I preach, I deliver to you. That same gospel can make you stand. The gospel does not need follow up. It is when the gospel is not understood, we follow people up. Hello? Who am I talking to today? Look at what Paul said. Next verse. Next verse, quickly. By which also ye are what? As you have received Christ, walk in him like that. Don't try to use principle. We live in a society where different things are taught today. We have left the Bible. We are preaching our own things. We are using the Bible to get things. We are using the Bible to get a result. No, the Bible is not to get result. The Bible is to impact the life of man. And the result will be the result outside. You didn't hear what I just said. If the Bible is only to get things, what about those who are not saved? They have the things you are looking for. Do we not say that they are saved? Oh Lord, come on, talk to me. The church world today is that the Bible, I get the, I, I want to follow the Bible, you receive breakthrough, you receive miracle. And so the Bible becomes a tool of getting material things. What about those who are not saved, who have those material things? Are they not saved? No, let's talk. Praise the name of the Lord. We have twisted the gospel. Paul said, this same gospel I preach to you is able to make you stand. He said, by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preach unto you unless you believed in where? In vain. Verse number three. For I delivered unto you first of all that, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our word according Verse 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to what? So the scripture becomes the foundation of our salvation and our maturity must also be in the scripture. Our work must be in the scripture. As you have received Christ Jesus, work also in him. Rooted. Be built up. Glory be to God forever. And the word of God has become the standard, the prescription of how we live. Everything about Christ, Christ the fullness of the God had was in him bodily. And we have become the body of Christ. Hallelujah. 
squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say, you are my brother. Say it like you mean it. Say, you are my brother. If the person is a sister, just say, you are my sister. We don't need to go to court. Don't say like you mean, we don't need to go to court. Have you heard certain statements in church? I will tell you some of those statements. Heaven will judge this case. The Bible has judged the case. Why will heaven come to judge the case? It just shows your level. You are allowing the flesh to dominate you. Romans 8, verse 8 and 9. Let's quickly read it again. Romans 8, 8 and 9. Now, I want you to live in the consciousness of who you are. And when you live in that consciousness, this thing will not be the result of your life. So they, they that are in the world cannot cannot but ye are not in the flesh. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm not in the flesh. Come on, say it like you mean. Say, I am not in the flesh. I have pleased God by receiving Jesus Christ. Please God by receiving him. Those that are in the flesh, they have not received Christ. And we cannot afford to walk like that. But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He's not born again. The proof that you are born again is that you have received him. But you are not in the flesh. Glory be to God forever. Come on, reassure yourself. Say, I'm not in the flesh. Say like you mean, say, I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. And the people who are in the spirit, they will judge the world. They will judge angels. And even the least matter, they can handle it. Am I speaking to somebody here today? The least matter we can handle. Oh no, I won't take that nonsense. It's nonsense because you have not allowed your true nature to gain the mastery over that situation. Allow your true nature get the mastery. Gain the ascendancy over the situation. Pastor, I don't want you to be involved in this matter. Why? You have made up your mind to be in the flesh. Heaven will settle it. No. That is why we are here. Even the heaven that want to settle it, we will judge the world, we will judge angels. It's me, their case, we will be the one to arrange it. Are we speaking to somebody here today? Squeeze your neighbors and say, we are not in the flesh. Say like you mean, say, okay, I am not in the flesh. And I know you are not in the flesh. Let's get back to that 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and see how. But I, I, I believe somebody is blessed. Look at the next verse. But the answer is the question mark. Next verse. If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, Set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Give us another rendering. Maybe that will flesh it out. If you have legal dispute about such matter, why go to outside judges who are not respected by the church? When you hear of some denominations being in court, Look at it here. Bishop, Apostle, Archbishop, all of them in the flesh. Look at it. If you have legal dispute, the same way chieftaincy title is being resolved in court, church matter is being taken to a court. <laughs> look at it. And but look at how the Bible puts it. If you have legal disputes about such matter. Why go to God? Why go to outside judges who are not respected? Give me a message. Message. Look up. If, so if you have cases pertaining to this life, do you select those who have to, who have no standing in the church? to judge I need a, a, a modern English look, look for one for me as this disagreement and wrong surface why would you ever entrust them to the judgment of people you don't trust in any other way 
praise the name of the Lord. But what was Paul dealing with? Everybody asked me, but what was Paul dealing with? Paul was trying to make the believer realize who he is. That was what Paul was dealing with. Say, wake up. Don't you know you will judge the world? Even those worshipping angels, you will worship, you will judge them. He said, even the smallest matter. A little thing. Because you know a lawyer. You want to prove a point. You want to tell the other person, I will deal with you. I know what my father in the law used to say to me. Those days. He said, you see some rich men, what do you hear them say? I will deal with, I will arrest you with my money. I will put you in prison with my money. You know the meaning of that? It's flesh on rampage. Immature child talking. Your money should be for the propagation of the gospel and not to lock people up in prison. Praise the name of the Lord. And we have just heard, when we start understanding our love nature, our love work, there are things we will overlook. Look at your neighbor say, there are things we will overlook. When we understand this, our true nature, we know that we have a love walk. You are my brother. You are my sister. We are from the same womb. We don't need to fight over issues. Now if you must win, you win. Let me be the loser. The Bible says, suffer yourself to be defrauded. Suffer yourself to be what? Defrauded. Oh, you want to win? You win. But the devil will not be glorified because of my matter. Instead of the devil to be glorified, you win. And when you win, we win. And when we win, the devil has no place in us. Can I hear an amen for somebody? Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say, you are my brother. You are my sister. I love you. We are from the same womb. We are from the same God. We are born again. We have received Christ. Let's walk in him. Let me show you a few things in Ephesians chapter 1. Quickly, Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly in Christ. Can we see some of the blessings? Our cousin, as he has chosen us in him. Blessing number one, we have been choosing in him. Write that down. I want to help you. Write it down. Blessing number one, we have been choosing in him. For how long? Before the foundation. I just want to know who I am first. Next verse. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the according to the good pleasure of his will. Leave it verse 5. Blessing number 2. We have been predestinated, we have been predestinated to the adoption of children. So it means we were adopted in. Is that not enough blessing? We are sharing the same identity now, true of us. We've been predestinated to the adoption of children. Brother, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. We've been predestinated to the adoption of children. Next. So I'll show you some blessings. Next. Verse 7. Verse 7. Okay. Are we, are we finished verse 6? No, we have not read verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6, please. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has accepted us. Right, we have been accepted in the beloved. <laughs> Don't you like that blessing? Evangelist, you can see this. That gives you, it, it reminds you of who you are and instead of fighting. In whom we have through his blood even I mean, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Look at your neighbor. My sins have been forgiven. Add that one to his. My sins have been forgiven. God has no record of sins against me. Did you hear what I just said? He has no record of sin against me. I just want to remind you of who you are. When you now understand you've been forgiven, 
You don't need to hold anybody to ransom. I will never let go of that man who will settle it in heaven. Heaven will tell it. God will judge. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been forgiven. <laughs> and I forgive the way I've been forgiven. Where he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Next. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So we now have access to the mystery of his will. What is a mystery? Something that was covered. Now we have access to what was covered. Something that was hidden. You now have access to what was hidden. I thought you were right. Is anybody blessed now? See what you have. I'm just showing you what you have. The whole book of Ephesians, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, shows what you now have in Christ Jesus and what Christ has done for you. It shows you what you have and what Christ has done for you. So let me say, I have access to the mystery of his way. Look at how he puts it. According to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even to him, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance. Write it down. We have an inheritance. True? True? According to scripture, do we have an inheritance? If we didn't have an inheritance, the Bible wouldn't talk about it. Look at the inheritance people fighting themselves. Going to court to save this land. It was my great-grandfather that gave to me. It's the only inheritance I have. <laughs> you have an inheritance more than that. Glory to God. Pastor, should I not fight for my land? Yes, but there's an extent to which you leave it, let go of it. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his will. Next. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. What purpose did he do it? That will be to the praise of his glory. Praise God. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right, the next one. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Look at all the blessings you have in Christ. Look at it. You have been sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It's the down payment. It's the earnest of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our spirit. It's been given to us. Look at how loaded you are. Too loaded to fail. Nobody saying amen. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the, re until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Next verse. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of all these things, Paul said, when I saw all these things, the only prayer I had for you, let's read through. Let's quickly read through. And the Lord threw out all the sins. Next verse. He said, after I heard all these powerful, powerful blessings you have been loaded with, cease not to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my word. What was the prayer? That God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit and revelation in the knowledge of him. Not to know mathematics, know him. The eyes being what? That you may have. I said that you may have. Who is arguing with me? That you may See, the Christian life is not about what you have. It's about what you know. When you know, things will look for you. The Christian life is not, I, I need to break through. Are you a thief? Well, I, I need to break this thing today. No. Paul said, when I saw all this blessing, all the spiritual blessings we have, that we have mentioned, he said, I, when I, wherefore, when I saw this, I ceased not to pray for you. Immediately he saw these things, his prayer is that, Lord, open their eyes to this thing. Let them see. Because if they don't see this, they will live their life anyhow. Glory be to God forever. Am I communicating here? That they may see spirit of wisdom and revelation. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may... Why no? Why no? Because
Jesus is there. A lot of us are so low, don't know. We are too low that we are looking for principle. When I apply this principle, Christ is not about principle, he's about a life. That life is in you. He said, He that has the son has. And he that has not the son has no. So Christianity is not principle, it's life. Once you have the son, you have that life. So Paul said, My prayer change the eyes of your understanding. Being enlightened, that you may know, know what? What is the hope of your calling? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in who? In who? Not, not to not towards angels, to saints. Verse number 19. I love this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his of his of his towards who? Come on, to us who? 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 Do you believe? There's power at work in you. No, hold this. I'll quickly jump and come back. Romans 1 16. We'll come back. Check. Romans 1 16. Quickly. We'll come back to this very verse. Alright. Everybody look up. Let's read. One, two, go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for 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 when you have the gospel you have power people you know let me quickly shock you I have had friends who say Pastor, God has taught you the word the next thing is power I say what that is how people enter into error and join the old court what did I say they enter into error they join the old court sometimes they allow familiar spirit to take them over because they are busy looking for power and there's nothing more powerful than the power revealed here. Let's read it again. One to go. For is there any other power outside of the gospel? Now, when people want to fast to get power, what do you think they are looking for? Number one, the prayer of Paul needs to come to those people. The eyes of their understanding be enlightened. That power does not come through. Same friends who told me. Pastor, yes, let's go to this mountain. I'm not against you if you want to go and pray. But if we are praying, let's know what we are praying for. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power. So any other power is the gospel. It is another power. Can we put it that way now? Huh? Come on, let's look at it together. Any power outside of the gospel, it is another power. Because the Bible has put it in perspective. What is the power? What is the power? Can somebody tell me what the power is? The gospel. What is this gospel? What is it? Another power. Another power that can tell you the sins you have committed. And because the power does not understand the power of the gospel. We not so say that Christ has death with sin. Pastor, I don't know if you understand. Of what importance is it? You bring a guy who disgraced the guy. You committed, you committed, you committed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have not told us what Christ did to sin. Behold the Lamb of God. That taketh away what? You have not told us how that we, were, we have received forgiveness of sin. From where we read in Ephesians. That is a... People say he, he was so accurate. He told me the name of my village. He told me the food I ate the day before yesterday. How many of you can remind? How many of you can remember the food you ate last week Thursday? Nobody can remember. And that is what God did to sin. He put it into the river or the ocean of forgetfulness. Hello. So when we now want to get the power outside of the gospel, it's another power. Are we in church? Ah, the church is so. Are you blessed? Is somebody getting anything, sir? I want to fast. The year is coming to an end. To it shall be a year of explosive. Explosive. Let me look for because we like we like grammar. Explosive what again? Explosive or good year. My year of exploit, exploited, exploitation, and exploit, uh, exploitation. So what do we do? We fast for power to make it happen. But if only we can give attention to the gospel, the power is revealed in the gospel. Everybody say the power, power. is in the gospel. So Paul said, I'm not ashamed. The same way it's not ashamed to call us brethren. That is how Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel.
or who for it is the power unto what to everyone how many of you believe write it down I have power write it I'm waiting for you if you don't get to know that you have power you soon start looking for power how many of you have been how many of you have been blessed today help me say I have power eh? you have power now you remember we just read Ephesians 1 19 eh? the exceeding greatness of his power to us what that does what that to us what that do, does what now what happens here again oh keep it there the Romans uh, okay let's read it again for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone do you believe you have power Ephesians 1 19 said the exceeding greatness of his power to us what that are so believing brings on. That believers here. Power is available. How many of you were here during the church council meeting? When we talked about belief. Mark 16, verse 15. Quickly. We will come back. Mark 16, 15. Quickly. Ah, brother, you, you don't like what we are saying. You don't like what we are saying. I preach the gospel to every quickly. Next verse. To 17. He that believeth, verse 17, quickly. I want you to just get some. And this sign shall, now, okay, hold that. This sign shall, who will he follow? The exceedingness of his power is to those who believe. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To, do, to them who, so those who believe their power carriers. They are the ones that will do signs and wonders. So write it down, I have power. <laughs> now I, I've been able to establish something now. This sign shall you see that man of God is very powerful. No, it's not man of God, it is for believers. The man of God appears to be powerful because he understands the power of the gospel that is inside. So I'm not teaching you so that you don't call me pastor. Oh, something is moving around my body. There's enough power to stop that thing. What did I say? This sign shall follow them that how many of you believe? You carry signs and wonders. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power unto them that do you believe? So you have power. The exceeding greatness of his power to us world who leave it in that Ephesians 119 as we draw the curtain for today. Ephesians 119. Everywhere it's calm. So much power, you are looking for courts to go to. <laughs> what did I say? You are looking for courts to go to. Let's read. Everybody want to go. And what is the exceed of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ. Can we read that again? Which when did he wrought or when did he wrought that power in Christ? During the resurrection. So which it give you another translation of verse 20. This power has been tested so it's reliable. Come on. I said this power has been tested. Is it reliable? Let's read it. Let's check it. Another translation. That raised Christ from the dead. Which power raised Christ from the bed? Dead. The power. Did you hear what I just said? The power at work in you is the same power that raised Christ up. Come on, come home. Tap your neighbor. Say, come home. Say, come home. Tap your neighbor. Say, come home. Okay, look at this translation. Everybody read. Want to go? He demonstrated this Messiah by raising him from the dead. And sitting him at his right hand in the heaven. Which power did he demonstrate? To us what the if a child believes Christ today, that same power is at work in What is the power? Can we give an example of the power? E.g., where was the power tested? Nothing dies in your life. Nothing dies in your hand. Nothing dies in your family. The same power that was tested is at work in you. That power raised up Jesus from the dead. I see that power bringing back dead things back to life. In the name of Jesus. 
I want you to speak to your body. Every dead thing ever is at work on your inside. Are you here? Come on, open your mouth and speak something. That same power is to them that believe. And you believe that power is working mightily in you. The power is working mightily. Oh, Rakatayade. Ilebo Shodoboho. Mendrede Shanamandradaha. Whatever is dead in your life, in your business, in your family, in your health, speak that power. Te brada haya, lude ketosa. Want to stand to your feet and speak something? Kela bosh, la ba la ba haya ba. I want to open your mouth and say something. He demonstrated this power in the Messiah by raising him. The same power that raised the Messiah. Is lifting people up. Oh, thank you.
us tonight. Thank you, Father, for Thank you for teaching us on Sunday. Glorify yourself in our lives. Cause our eyes to be open like Paul prayed. That so much power is at our disposal. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share.